13th of December, 1973, French journalist Claude Vaurion was driving through the volcanic area of Clermont-Ferrand, central France, when he had a sudden urge to take a walk at the Puy de la Sola. Suddenly, he noticed a bright, flashing light in the sky, heading in his direction. And as it got closer, he saw that it was made of a grey metallic substance, the shape of a flattened bell. His curiosity turned to anticipation as the machine approached him, until when, about 30 metres away, it stopped and hovered, still, just above the ground. A trapdoor opened below, unfolding into a staircase. What at first Claude thought was a child, stepped down and walked straight towards him. At a loss what to do, Claude acted as a true journalist and asked, Where do you come from? From very far away, and I have come to talk to you, Claude Vaurion. They talked. Claude was invited into the craft, and over the next six consecutive days, the extraterrestrial dictated a series of messages which are both clear and revolutionary. This is what the extraterrestrial said. We created humanity. You mistook us for gods. We were the ones who started all the religions on earth. And now that humanity is capable of understanding this, we would like you to build an embassy where we can land officially in front of everyone. A long time ago on our planet, we had reached a stage similar to the one you are in now. Our scientists were beginning to design life through the synthesis of DNA. The whole of our society watched with fascination as they created more and more sophisticated organisms. Until one day, they made a mistake. From then on, public opinion turned against these scientists, and they were forced to take their experiments elsewhere. They finally found a planet suitable for the creation of life. It was your Earth, and at the time had no life on it at all. It was completely covered with water and clouds. Many ancient texts point to the work of these scientific creators. Let's open the Bible at the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 12. They divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. The waters below was the ocean. The waters above were the clouds. We dug with the help of enormous underwater explosions, creating huge holes into which the waters rushed, allowing dry land to emerge. An island formed, a continent, the original single continent. Let the waters under heaven be gathered together into one place, and let dry land appear. Genesis 1.9 On this single landmass, we set up seven laboratories, one for each of our own seven races, and began our experiments synthesizing life. We started by making simple life forms, such as viruses and bacteria. And as we progressed in our research, we made more complicated organisms. Plants, fish, reptiles, birds, and eventually mammals, daring each time to make an even more beautiful and sophisticated model of living art. Life did not evolve. It simply followed the inspiration of our chemical artists who integrated and adapted each new prototype to survive in the overall ecology. Fragrances, shapes, colors, styles, textures, movements, even mating rituals were all made to have beauty, harmony and balance. Seeing this incredible progress, opinions were divided in our government as to whether this artificial life was safe for us. Would the created destroy the creators? We decided to allow our scientists to continue their experiments, 
as long as they did not create any intelligent life. But the temptation was too strong for these scientists and artists, who were impassioned by their work of populating a virgin world. So one day, some of them decided to disregard their orders and synthesize intelligent people like themselves. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Genesis 1.26 Our government was extremely alarmed when it heard about this. How could we be sure that the human beings that had been created would not become a threat to us? For our own security, we told our scientists to keep these human beings in ignorance of any scientific knowledge. They were even told to make these people whom they had created believe that we were almighty gods, so as to be sure they would respect us. Of every tree in the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat of it, for on that day you shall surely die. Genesis 2.17 At the time, the human beings called these extraterrestrials Elohim, which in ancient Hebrew meant those who come from the sky. It's found in the original Bibles, but in more recent times was mistranslated by the word God. It's important to realize that this is a plural, the singular being Eloha. References to the Elohim can also be found in other ancient texts. For example, in the writings of the Hindu, Greek, Egyptian, and Amerindian civilizations. We can read even today about the many gods who had human emotions and who lived near or with these human beings. These gods talked to human beings and even had relations with them. When our scientists created people like ourselves, opinion on our planet became divided. Could we trust human beings? But there was a group of scientists who had begun to deeply love the human beings they had made. They wished to give them scientific knowledge so that they would be able to communicate as equals. Their love grew so much that this group decided to educate some humans and reveal to them the truth that creators and created are exactly the same. The serpent said unto the woman, Of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, you shall not surely die. For Elohim both know that in the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods. Genesis 3, 4 In other words, you shall be as those you mistook for gods. If you entered this laboratory, you would realize that we are just like you, and one day you too will create life. You are just another link in the chain. The eternal cycle of creation continues. <laughs>